Wingardium Leviosa. Alohomora. Swish and flick. It's not Leviosa, it's Leviosa. Honestly, Ron. It's okay, Harry. I can see them too. You're just the same as I am. I suspect the Nargles did it. I'll take one butter beer, please. I can open this. Hello sweeties, today we are going to be looking at my art materials. So it's just going to be like a quick rundown on what I use for art. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to focus on painting right now. I have a lot of art materials that I probably won't discuss. So I'm just kind of, I think I'm going to focus on brushes today. I don't know if you can see this. This is my Sailor Moon brush. I'm obsessed with Sailor Moon. Obsessed. I have a little Sailor. It's supposed to be, I don't know if you can see it, like a half crescent. So, <clears throat> to start out, these small brushes are the ones, These. I, what I usually do is I kind of organize them. I have this one as my big brushes. Big brushes can't really see it so this is my big brush these are my little brushes and they're also um, kind of my detail brushes I, I don't know if how well you can see it but these tiny little guys are some of my favorites so you can kind of see how like splayed out the bristles are I don't know if you can see it I don't have the best camera as far as it doesn't automatically um, focus but these are Princeton art brushes and this is a 20 by 0 liner I believe these are actually uh, for watercolors but the thing the I paint a very particular way and <clears throat> you won't be able to find uh, brushes that are oil painting brushes this small so I, you know, I'm, I've been in a constant search for certain things. I want to get really fine lines with my oil paints and I've tried different mediums and I've just, I keep on struggling with it. So, uh, this is kind of what I found works best is, um, these watercolor liner brushes. They don't last long cause they're not meant to, to be an oil brush. It's a synthetic water, watercolor brush. And, um, you know, they're not. They're not crazy expensive. It's usually like, I think five or six bucks for this brush. And I just have a bunch of them. Like, I just keep on buying them. And, um, you know, these ones are ones that I haven't used that much. So the brushes are, or the bristles are all nice and straight. These ones are splayed out because I've used them. Uh, you know, what I suggest is just you buy it and then, you know, they're not that expensive. But yeah, I just keep on buying them. They're not crazy expensive. <clears throat> and they're the only thing that I really love as far as doing the line work really well. <clears throat> so, um, again, there's different ones too. I actually recently saw this is this one. They're both Princeton art brushes, but one of them says monogram and the other one says liner. So I don't know. Uh, what the difference is, but I just know that this one's the monogram one is a little bit smaller and the liner is a little bit longer. I don't know if you can tell. But uh, anyway, <coughs> so I have it kind of put in my Sailor Moon cup as uh, these are kind of the ones that I use the most for details. Uh, I have some watercolor brushes in here that I actually use for watercolors, but a lot of these watercolor brushes I'm going to use for my oils or just my liner brushes, and they're the ones that are in better condition. So these bigger ones um, are old acrylic brushes, but I've stopped painting with acrylic, so they're, I, they've just turned into watercolor brushes, but these ones are actually really expensive brushes. They're actually oil for oils. Um, they're probably going to run you anywhere between $30 up to $100 each. 
but I've had these for years and if you really take care of them they'll last you forever it's the oil paint brushes that's kind of the nice thing you're spending a lot more on them but they're gonna last you a long long time if you take care of them one thing I suggest for taking care of your brushes is and this isn't something I do and I need to do it more often uh, but you'll you'll get a way longer lifespan out of your brushes if you do it because what I used to do is I just just and I still kind of do this is just leave them soaking in water but that's really not the best thing to do because then the ends get splayed out and you don't want to do that so this is one of the things that I like uh, I don't know if you can see it um, it's it's just like a soap it's a brush soap and you just kind of like take your brush and you dip it in here this one is called the Master's Brush Cleaner. And I'm sure you can find it online. It says B&J specially prepared, cleanses oil paint, watercolor, acrylic, and I don't know what that last word is because there's paint on there. But this this stuff's awesome. Like I really suggest you can, and again, it's, it's for oil, acrylic, and watercolor. So you can basically use this for whatever brushes and whatever medium you're doing. So this is a great product right here. I have some more art cleansers where, or brush cleansers where you kind of leave it soaking. If I've had brushes that are completely destroyed that I've been able to kind of bring back. So uh, something that I've really loved lately is this graphite and charcoal powder. And this is more for drawings that I've been playing around with and I'm actually really, really liking it. So this is an example, I don't know how well you can see it, of um a graphite drawing that I did using that graphite powder I really really like it it ends up actually making um your drawings look a lot more smooth and you are you're also able to do it a lot faster um yeah, I really like it. I mean, I've only used it for like two, three drawings, and I'm sure that there's a lot more that I can learn from it the more I use, but I've really liked it. I would suggest buying, um, so what I did when using the charcoal brushes is buy a set of three brushes for them. So these are three synthetic watercolor brushes, and these are Winsor Newton. So they're pretty small, because I mean, I'm... I'm focused on doing just like small like quick little graphite drawings so these are my brushes these are more brushes and <laughs> these ones are for stains I like using wood stains sometimes but I've like not cleaned them so this is an example of what will happen when you don't clean your brushes this is like super hard and this is how it used to be these are brushes that I use to gesso with so a lot of people ask me what I use to gesso my work with so this is uh, the clear gesso that I use so that when you if you decide to paint on wood and you want the grain to still show or if you just want to do something where you still want the grain to show like do a stain um, I would suggest doing this <clears throat> and it'll it'll seal your wood and the reason you want to use a gesso is so that you, when you paint, if you don't paint with a gesso, the wood keeps on soaking in your paints. So you're using a lot more paint than you need to. So this acrylic gesso will definitely help in making it so you're not wasting your paint. I, I use these uh, popsicle sticks for different stuff. Um, generally, it's like to mix stuff, like when I'm using my wood stains. Uh, you usually have to mix it because the pigment has settled down to the bottom, so I use those to mix with the wood stains. I think that's about it as far as painting materials. There's a lot of uh, medium that I want to use and play with, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. So all I really do is use the, ga the Gamsol. Uh, let's see. Gamsol. Um, this is Gamblin's Gamsol. It's the only one that I've liked because it's actually odorless mineral spirits, and it's something that... I highly suggest if you're getting into oil paintings because first it doesn't smell and I'm really sensitive to smell and I have severe severe allergies so these are really really great because you don't you know it doesn't smell in anything and they're actually non-toxic I think a lot of people think that whenever you're mixing with like spirits that it's toxic this is non-toxic it's mineral spirits so it's actually something it's just as harmful as 
using dish soap so you you know the worst you can get from it is like a little like skin irritation and that's only if you're like literally soaking your hands in them so uh, um, so I'm gonna move on to my drying materials so I actually have these really cute like Sailor Moon um, I don't know what you would call them like containers and I've got this one as well Chibi Moon. She's really cute. And my dog actually bit this before I... Oh, I was so upset. He bit these while it was inside of its little bag. So I hadn't even gotten to use it, but I don't even care. I still love them. So this is kind of um, where I keep my microns. I don't use them as often as I should. Um, there's a bunch of stuff I want to do this year. I'm actually thinking of working on a coloring book. And these microns are going to come in really handy for that. So that's where this one is. This one is where I keep all of my pencils. And it's got a really cute inside. So this is kind of, this is like the inside little, this is one of the, um, the inside part, I don't know. And then it's got a cute thing on the inside as well. And underneath here is actually like, um, a times table and oh no no it's not even a times table I think this is awesome because it's not times it's uh it's actually like I don't know if you can see but it's like um your tangent cosines and sines all the stuff you need for like calculus and um trigonometry which is kind of crazy to me I would have loved this when I was taking freaking calculus I took like three or four years of calculus because before I decided that I wanted art to be my career, I would study, I was studying architecture and I had to take like three, four years of calculus and a couple years of physics and AutoCAD and all that stuff and then I realized, yeah, I'm not into architecture. All right, so these are my favorite. So these, now I'm moving on to what I used to kind of to draw with. And these guys are my favorite as far as drawing. They are Stadler, Stadler, and um, this is a point three Stadler. The really nice thing about these guys is that uh, there's a little like twisty thing. You can twist it right here in the middle, and it'll say if you're using an HB or an F, or an H, 2H, 3H, 2B, B, so it, you can twist it until, so what I do is I have all four of these and I keep track of what lead I have in there so that I know which one's the lightest, which one's the darkest, because I really like to uh, try and organize myself. That's one of my things I'm trying to do this year is focus on organizing. So uh, this one, this one has a 2H, which is um, I think kind of the middle. This one has an HB. And the other two I just moved, so I don't know what they have. So those are my favorite ones. Um, my second favorite are these Draftmatic Alvins. Just because I, I like this metal part right here. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if this is more of like a, like it's a draft pen, pencil, so I'm thinking it's for architecture. But I actually really like them and I like how heavy they are. These ones are a lot lighter, but I like the, the heaviness because I have a heavy hand when I paint. So I really like the heaviness and I just like how that metal part looks. Um, oh, and oh shoot, look, it has, and this has the thingy too. You can actually, that's crazy. <laughs> it also has the thing, right, this metal part. You can also move it so you can see if you're using a 2H and F or whatever. That's awesome. So actually, you know what? They're tied for first. Both of these are tied for first. All right. And then lastly, these ones are graphic gear. And I really don't like these at all. I used these for a really long time, but they're very, very sensitive. This tip kept on breaking on me and moving. So once this little tip right here moves to the to an angle, it's just like garbage. So I really don't really like these. But whatever, I mean, if this is all you got, go ahead and use it. You know, I actually even have the regular, like these regular old, just regular mechanical pencils too. 
Um, the other thing I would suggest is getting different sizes. So a lot of these are 0.3 because I like working small, but this one's a 0.5. And you can also get 0.7s, which I think um, will get you, um, you can use the harder lead for, or the softer lead, which will give you darker colors, like uh, the bees and stuff like that. And then the last thing is that I really love are my erasers. So these are the two erasers that I use the most. And this little guy is the love of my eraser life. <laughs> that makes any sense. Uh, it's really tiny. I don't know if you can see it coming out. Uh, it's so awesome. It's like whenever you got something small, you got to erase. This is the best. And um, this is called Tombow Mono Eraser. Elast the last Tomer eraser, I don't know how to say that. Made in Japan. On um, the side note, I'm trying to learn Japanese. I really want to go to Japan someday. Uh, me and my boyfriend are probably going to Thailand this year, hopefully. But I really, really want to go to Japan. I think it'd be awesome. So I've been trying to teach myself Japanese, and so far I've learned Hajime Machite, Watashiwa, MJ Su, Arigato, Konnichiwa. I thought I'd conclude right now uh, my art materials because I think that's about it. There's other stuff I use like wash and watercolor, but I'll address that on the different video because this one's going to be too long. So, yeah. Okay. Cheers and thanks for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. Another thing I'm going to try and start doing is um, a new segment on my series that's called Want to Grab a Bite? where you guys will sit down and have lunch with me and we will have an art discussion. I'm going to try and film the first one this coming week, maybe Tuesday. And I think I'm going to discuss getting into galleries and working with galleries because it's important. It's important for an artist's career, but there's pros and cons to it. So yeah, I think it'll be a good discussion to have and <clears throat> We'll go from there. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share the video, and let me know anything you'd like to see on my channel. Alright. Arrivederci.